honey begin to breathe now to salvation in your name Jesus Christ my living hope Jesus Christ my living hope Jesus Christ my living And I exalt Thee, I exalt Thee, I exalt Thee, O oh, Lord. I Sing it with me again. I exalt thee. And I exalt thee. I exalt thee. I exalt thee. O oh, team keeps playing, would you just take a moment and use your own words and exalt him and, and lift him up? That's what it means to exalt. It means to lift up the name of Jesus. It means to give him the praise that he's so worthy. Would you take a moment in your own words and would you just exalt his name? Would you just lift his name up? Would you thank him? Would you, would you just give him a, 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 an offering of praise from your lips this morning? time with me. I exalt thee. And I exalt thee. I exalt thee. I exalt thee.
Father, we worship you this morning. We worship you, God. You're so worthy. We worship you, God. You send Jesus Christ to this earth on mission for a purpose. It wasn't by chance or by accident or because of man's doing that Jesus went to the cross and died, but you sent him on that purposeful mission so that he could pay a penalty that he did not deserve to pay. He could pay a price that could only be paid by a sacrificial lamb. And he came and he lived and he did the miracles and all the wonderful things, but he came for a purpose and that was to die on Calvary's cross. But that wasn't the end of the story. Because three days later, as we've been talking about, we know that he rose and he's alive and he's still alive. Until he comes back, he'll be seated at your right hand, ever interceding for those who believe. Oh God, we worship you today. We give you thanks and we give you praise. We give you glory and we give you honor because there's no one else who's worthy. And we pray it all in the precious matchless and wonderful name of Jesus and everybody said amen give the Lord a clap offering this morning he's worthy he's worthy you may be seated you may be seated so just a couple of things as we transition for those of you big kids like me you can take out your Bible and turn to the gospel of Matthew in the 28th chapter uh, some of you are eyeing up the water, juice, and coffee. I'm not offended. Go ahead. I brought my cup. <laughs> Excuse me while I take a sip. <laughs> Miss Kayla is coming around. Everybody say hi to Miss Kayla. Hi, She's over there. Uh, kids, you are getting a handout uh, to kind of go along with the message this morning. And so you can follow along and answer some questions. If you are able, at the end of the service, Miss Kayla will be back at the info table. And kids, you can take your sheet, that top sheet, and you can turn it into her. She has a special prize for you. She has a special gift for you. Uh, so you can go ahead and do that. And then, kids, I want you to help me because... I invited someone to come and join us this morning. I don't know if they're showing up. I don't know if they're coming or not. So I just need you every once in a while just to be looking around and help me out if you see somebody. Uh, for those of you that uh, have been participating in our week of prayer and fasting, the, the testimonies are coming in, and so we are so excited to share those with you. We want to encourage you, take this week and continue to email or text those testimonies to us, and we're going to begin sharing them next Sunday morning, and uh, we're just so blessed by the testimonies that have been coming in, and we just encourage you, if God, if you saw God move uh, in, in, in a great way, in a small way, uh, we want you to send that to us so that we can rejoice with you, but we can share it as well because his name's worthy to be praised, right? And we don't want to just keep that testimony to ourselves, but we want to be able to share that with others. Did I, honey, did I miss anything? Was that all the things I was supposed to say? I think so too, but I have to check because, you know, there's a lot and there's notes and it's, it's everywhere. Um, one last thing, I, I, I wrote it down. Tomorrow, we're going to be undecorating and putting things away at 10 a.m. And so if you're around, you're available, you have a little bit of time to spare, uh, we'd love to have some help with that. So anyway, now we got all the business out of the way. Let's jump into God's Word this morning. Uh, again, we're going to be reading from Matthew chapter number 28 in just a moment. But uh, I, I just want to take about two or three minutes and kind of set up the Scripture for us for today. Uh, the Scriptures take us through this historical journey journey that we've been talking about briefly, these last moments of Jesus' life. And, and we're not going to read the scripture, but in Matthew chapter number 27, uh, you'll see some of those last moments of Jesus' earthly life. He stands before Pilate and Herod and ultimately gets his sentence of being uh, having to hang on the cross. Well, we see that take place and we know that soldiers mock him, they spit on him, all sorts of horrendous things happen. And we see ultimately he dies uh, in, in chapter number 27 at the sixth hour until the ninth hour. Darkness comes over the land 
Jesus cries out. He says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And as he breathes these last words, he dies. And he hangs there for a little while dead. It's getting to be evening, and so they come because there were two others hanging on crosses, one on either side of Jesus, and they break those two men's legs so that they will die because they're getting ready for a holiday and they can't do any work, and so they need to get the bodies off of the crosses. But they notice that Jesus is already dead. And then the scripture teaches us that there's a man who comes and asks for the body of Jesus. And he goes and he lays him in a tomb. It's a homemade tomb. And they come back a couple of days later to be able to give Jesus the proper burial. I was out in the car yesterday and I was running some errands and I heard, listening to some Christian radio on the, uh, some Christian radio and I was listening to the dialogue taking place and you know, yesterday was Saturday and so they said, you know, yesterday, Friday, talking about Jesus hanging on the cross and dying, they're saying tomorrow we celebrate the risen Savior, but what happened today? You know, think about that. What, What happened today? Well, you know, we don't know for sure in that the scripture doesn't teach us, but one of the things that I have always said, and it was interesting to hear them talk about, but Jesus gave his disciples an opportunity to mourn. There was an opportunity to rest. It was a day of preparation, getting ready to celebrate the Passover. God, in his infinite wisdom, knew the timing of all of these events. I wonder what some of the things were that were going through those disciples' minds on Saturday. Maybe things like, where were they going to do now? Where were they going to go now? Would they go back to their normal life? Because remember, they all left their lives to follow him. If they were going to go back to their normal life, how were their families and their friends going to treat them? How were they going to respond in their three-year absence? What kind of laughter or ridicule might they face because of the decision that, has been ma- that, that they had made three years ago? This morning, can I tell you, the Bible is a book which faces life's realities. There's nothing that you and I journey through that is not covered in some way, shape, or form in the Scriptures. Whether it's talking about a physical issue, whether it's talking about a spiritual battle, or whether it's talking about how we're feeling, the Bible covers our lives. You just have to get into the Word and and know where to look to find it. But whether it's, like I said, emotional or whether it's spiritual or physical, the things that you and I deal with, God's Word deals with. It talks about it. A relationship with him is not something that he purposed us to have to attain. It's something that through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, he wanted us to be able to experience. It's not about religion, it's about relationship. Look at someone sitting near you and tell them, say, it's about a relationship. Go ahead and do it. Now, now, now turn to somebody else on the other side and tell them the same thing. It's not about religion, but it's about a what? A relationship. And by the way, Jesus specializes in those two. Hebrews chapter 4 verse number 15 says, We do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. He knows all about your weaknesses. He knows all about your insufficiencies and your struggles. He, he's, he knows all about them. Isaiah chapter 41 verse number 10, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God's not saying, here I am, now try to work your way towards me. He's saying, I'm right here with you, call upon my name. 
There's a big difference in those two things. You know what the difference is? Religion versus relationship. Religion says work a little harder, do a little more, you can attain it someday, hopefully, maybe. Relationship says I understand you, I get you, and I'm with you. Hallelujah. Jesus told his disciples that after he would die, he would raise again on the third day. And yet, what do we find the disciples doing? Hiding. Are they eagerly awaiting in anticipation for what he told them was going to happen? No. Let's not be too hard on them, though, because how many times do you and I read, the, read God's word, know all the promises, and yet don't respond the correct way? Matthew chapter number 28, beginning in verse number 1. Let's read this together. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were as white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. That's, by the way, that, that's being scared. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said, come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him now I have told you. We read from the Gospel of Mark to open the service, and here's, uh, yeah, here's Matthew's uh, account of the same thing. John has it as well, and what we do is we take these Gospel accounts and we overlay them because there's some details that I shared at the beginning of the service to open in the Gospel of Mark that aren't recorded here in Matthew, and it's not that one is true and one's not, it's just people's perspective. If I went and asked four people, four different people at four different tables, tell me about the pancake breakfast this morning, I'd get some similarities. They were filled with grief and not hope. Mary Magdalene and the rest of the women go to the grave. They see that the body of Jesus is gone, and then they go back and tell the others that they have seen Jesus alive. Raised from the dead, just like he said he would. Just like he said he would. Just like he said he would. Hi, Mary. Come here. Come here. I, I want to ask you a couple of you. He came back to life? Oh, my goodness. This is a microphone. You probably don't know what this is, but we all want to hear what you have to say. You just talk in it. Okay. Now turn around okay. and let us see you. Well, I went to the tomb because we, we had decided that we were going to bring some oils and some spices because we didn't do it properly the other day. And he wasn't there. And there was this being, something very bright, that told us that we were looking in the wrong place. He wasn't there. That he had come back to life. Like he said, he used the word resurrected. But, and then I, I couldn't. I, there were many emotions in me. And then all of a sudden I hear he say, Mary, and I know it was him. Oh, wow. I knew him. So I turned. And there he was. But I, I wanted to touch him, you know, to make sure that he was real. And he said, no, don't, don't, because I haven't gone to the Father yet. Mm -hmm. Go and tell your brothers and sisters ab ab about this. Wow. Mary, when you were headed to the tomb, how, how were you feeling on the inside? When, was, on the way to, you said you carried some spices and things. How were you feeling in like, that moment? Like my feet were lead. I, mm. 
it was hard to go. It was hard to see him the way that we saw him. And, and, and what about all the things that he said? Yeah, yeah. And, and then when you realized it was him and he called your name, you, you just said a minute ago, oh but, my. but what, can you? I could not, it's, it's like I couldn't fit inside myself. It, it was pure joy to wow. see that he was back. He was alive. Just as he said. Thank you so much. I know you have some other things going on. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for being here. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Mary, Mary was able to be there at the cross. She, she watched Jesus hang there. Close your eyes for a moment. You're headed to the tomb with some spices and some oil. You watch Jesus hang on the cruel, rugged cross. The Bible says that his body was so beat up and bloody that even his mother didn't recognize who he was. That's how marred, that's how, that, that's how horrible his, his physical body was. Imagine the emotions you're feeling on this walk to the tomb. But then you get there and you realize that big stone that was rolled in front had been rolled away. And, and you're probably pretty curious and, and you're probably wondering and, and what in the world happened. But then you see this angel. And he tells you that Jesus is alive. He's risen. You can open your eyes. Some of us need to be, able to, to, to be able to picture that. Imagine what it was like. Listen, Peter said in Acts 2, verse number 24, but God raised him, Jesus, from the dead, freeing Jesus from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. It was impossible for death to, to keep Jesus down. How many of you have ever been down before? You feel like you've been beat up, maybe even run over, maybe even somebody ran you over, backed up and did it again. Anybody? Just three of us. No, no, a lot of us. A lot of us have felt that way, right? The enemy's perspective is, he's dead! Woo! There's victory in the enemy's camp, right? That's his perspective, and he only got to feel that, feel that way for a brief time because then came the morning. Because God would not allow his only begotten son that left heaven and all of its glory and came to earth, born of a virgin, lived a sinless life approximately 33 years with one mission, I mentioned it earlier, one purpose, and that was to die for the sin of mankind, to offer salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ. God was not about to allow death to hold down his son. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. Sometimes you and I go through these moments, and you raised your hand a minute ago. How many of you have been felt down? How many of you felt like you've been run over and twice? Sometimes life feels that way, bleak, hopeless, pointless, even of no use. But I want to tell you today, I have good news for you today. I want to encourage you today. There is joy. There is hope. There is forgiveness, there is purpose, there is peace, there is an answer, there is healing, there is someone who has your back, there is someone who's ever interceding, there is a God who's bigger and stronger and more powerful than the enemy, there is salvation, there is heaven, there is unconditional love, there is one who's all-powerful, all-knowing, and one who is the King of kings, the Lord. Lord of Lords, He's the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. There is someone who restores relationships. There is someone who brings reconciliation. There is Jesus Christ because He's not dead. Yeah. 
And all he does is say, call upon my name. Believe in me. Believe in the works that I've done. Believe what God's word said is true. And that doesn't mean that we have to have an all-compassing, everything figured out kind of thing. He says, no. Just simply come as you are. Listen, there's power for your journey. There's hope for your journey. There's joy for your journey. And there's peace for your journey. And it's all found in relationship with Jesus Christ. The risen Savior. By the way, quick side note, kids, especially you older ones, in the middle of your sheet, it says check off the words as you hear them. I have it up here. I've already said them all twice. So you have to be listening Cross them off when I say them if you hear them. You big kids just have to listen. You don't have words to check off. 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, verse number 17. And if Christ had not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sin. Not only was it his mission to die for the sin of all mankind, to die for the wrong that's been done, that was done, that was being done, and was going to be done in the future, but it was also part of the plan for him to be raised again. He had to raise from the dead to conquer death and hell and the grave. Romans chapter number 4, verse number 24. He was delivered over to death for our sin and was raised to life for our justification or to make us right with God. That's what the scripture says. There was purpose in everything that Jesus did. He lived, and and I've said it a bazillion times, and you'll hear me say it a bazillion more. He lived on purpose with a purpose. He was delivered over to death for our sin. He was raised to life so that you and I could be made right with God. Notice, He does the work there. I don't earn right standing with God. I don't earn justification as the scripture says. I can't earn it. Jesus did it. Jesus, I can't earn right standing with God. He's a holy God. He's sinless. He does all things perfect. He does everything right. He does everything in the right time, in the right way, in the right, he does it all right. How many of you can be just like that? Yeah, don't raise your hand. Yeah, that's the one time you shouldn't. We can't. And no one did, by the way. I'm not that. No one did. I'm just saying don't. Don't be tempted. Pastor raised his hand. Maybe I should too. No. We can't do it. He does the work. We enter into relationship. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe what your word says. I believe who you are. And while I may not fully comprehend that to the most, I just take you at your word, come into my life, forgive me of my sin, be my Lord and Savior. And the Bible says in that moment, we're justified. In that moment, we've been made right, in right standing with God. Just by calling upon the name of Jesus Christ. The scripture teaches teaches us that everyone who calls upon the Lord will be saved. Saved from what? Saved in eternity being separated from God. Hell is a real place. Hell is the place where God is not. Heaven is is God's home. And for those who've called upon the Lord Jesus Christ to be their Lord and Savior, we know at some point this life is going to end. 
at some point we will take a final breath or Jesus will come back. One of those two things is going to happen. We just don't know which one is going to be first. But whether it be way of the grave because we've breathed our last or whether it's by way of Jesus coming back, we will be reunited with our creator and will be in heaven forever. Those who call upon the name of the Lord. And if you're here today in the sanctuary, if you're joining us online and you've not yet made that decision, today is the day you can do that. Today is the day you can say, I recognize I'm not in relationship with Jesus Christ. And we'll give you opportunity. You don't have to wait. You can call upon his name right now. You don't have to wait to an end of the service, but we will give you opportunity at the end of the service to be able to do that. Because it's that important. Eternity is at stake. It's hard for us to fathom eternity because we comprehend the here and now. We, we have our circles, we have our bubbles, uh, our, our family life, maybe our work life. If you're a child, you're in school or, or whatever, you have your circle. It's hard for us to dream beyond that. What about the other, you know, seven billion people on earth? It's hard for us to comprehend that. It's easy for God. It's easy for God. Matter of fact, when we ask Jesus into our life to forgive us of our sin, the Bible says he gives us a deposit of the Holy Spirit so that we understand, we begin to understand eternity, begin to understand there's more. But he doesn't just do it for something down the road, he also does it for right now. The Bible says he's our helper, he's our counselor, he's our comforter that deposit of the Holy Spirit that we get. He was delivered over to death for our sin and raised to life for our justification or to make us right with God. Romans 6, 4 says, We were therefore buried with Him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may have new life. When, when we ask Jesus to be our Lord and Savior, to forgive us of our sin, we are a new creation, a brand new person. We might look the same on the outside, but on the inside, we are completely transformed. And that phrase, new creation, when you go back to its original text, actually means a new being that's never been before. A new being, something that has never existed before, suddenly is, and that's who you are as you begin that relationship with Jesus Christ. Boy, that's exciting. That's exciting. I can't do that, but Jesus can. Jesus didn't live his life, die on the cross, and even resurrect again so that you and I have to figure things out. He conquered death to bring you and I victory. I have come that they might have life and have it to the full or have it in abundance, whatever your translation may be. And there's actually a couple other translations that say some different things. I have come that you might have physical life but also life to the full, which is talking about eternal life in heaven, but also a blessed and enriched life while on earth. Doesn't mean that we don't encounter difficult moments or difficult things, but it does mean that we don't walk them alone. It does mean that we don't have to figure it out on our own. It does mean that we don't have to flounder around hoping something good will come. Something good has already come and he died on the cross and resurrected again. I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say, I just need something good to happen. Listen, every good thing that you need has already happened. Right? 
Can I challenge you this morning? When there's an obstacle or a challenge in front of you, it's not an obstacle or a challenge. It's an opportunity for you and I to see God move. Remember that the next time you go through a tough spot. Remember that the next time that you feel like you're standing at the base of the mountain and it is just as wide as can be and tall as can be. And you're like, God, we're not going to be able to make it up over the top. Here's a problem. And I want to let you know God doesn't see it as an op- a problem. He sees it as an opportunity. If you and I would allow him to work... Because sometimes he's going to help you climb up the mountain. Sometimes he's going to help you dig a tunnel through the mountain. And sometimes, like his word declares, he's just going to say, tell the mountain to move. And he can do all of it. I think God sometimes is standing there scratching his head. Why are you trying to climb the mountain? When I want to help you speak to the mountain. Why are you trying to walk around the mountain when you and I are going to climb over the mountain? Why are you trying to, whatever it might be, and God's saying, I just want to be with you and guide you. So many of us use God as our last resort. God desires to be the first resort. God, I've tried to figure this all out. Would you help me? And sometimes I think God's up in heaven going, I've been trying to help you since it happened. You could have been beyond this already. God doesn't desire to be our last resort, but he should be our first. 1 Peter chapter number 1, verse number 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that should say, from the dead. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope. We sang about it earlier, a living hope. If you're going to try to find hope, peace, or joy in our world today, you're not going to have much success. And if you find a glimpse, that's all you're getting is a glimpse. Because it will fade very quickly. But if you put, if you're putting your hope, your trust, and your confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll have a hope that can't be taken away. You'll have a joy that continues to well up inside and overflow. Because the scripture says it's the joy of the Lord that is our strength. And he gives us a peace That passes all understanding. Listen, I've been through troubles and circumstances. I've been in situations that in and of themselves, there's no hope, peace, or joy. But there's something about leaning on the everlasting arms of Jesus Christ. That in the midst of those situations, in the midst of those circumstances, in the midst of the trial and the hurt and the pain and the brokenness and and the unanswered questions that he says, here I am. Remember he said to Moses when, when he was standing at the burning bush, tell them I am has sent you. And Jesus, when, when he was talking to some of the religious leaders in the Gospel of John, and he talks about knowing Abraham. And, and the religious leaders are like, wait a minute, you don't know Abraham. He was born, you know, hundreds of years ago. And Jesus says, I am. Today I want you to know that Jesus is still I am. You say, I, that doesn't make sense. He says, I am anything and everything you need. I am Able to do anything. I am able to conquer 
any situation, mountain, trial, or circumstance that you might feel is in your way. Jesus today says, I am your healer. Whether that's a a physical ailment, whether you're struggling emotionally or mentally, spiritually, Maybe you feel like there's so much going on inside of you that you're just bogged down by the weight and the pressure of it all. He says today, I am. Just call upon me. I am able to carry that for you. I am able to deliver you out from underneath of it. I am able, if you'll allow me, to take that burden from you and give you the peace and the joy And the hope that you are so desperate for. I am is who he is. Would you call upon that I am this morning? What do you need this morning? What what do you need today? Well, we have however many there are here and each one of us represents something. He is, I am. If he's not been your first resort, you can make him your first resort today. I mentioned earlier, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, today is the day you can do that. Maybe you used to know him and, and you've, you've gotten away, listen, the craziness and busyness of life and, and you've gotten away from reading his word and, and talking or praying with him and, and you realize sitting here listening and, and to his word and, and the words that I'm sharing this morning, you realize, man, I, I don't have that like I once did. Today's the day you can make that right. Scripture teaches us today is the day of salvation. Not because you're doing it right, but because he already did it. Because he already died for it. Because he already rose again three days later to give you the victory. Hell has been defeated The chain of sin breaks off when we ask him to come into our life. And so the things that we struggle with, we don't have to struggle with as we move forward in that relationship with him because he is our, as I mentioned earlier, our comforter. He's our counselor. He's our helper. And so the things that we once struggle with, we don't have to continue to struggle with because Jesus comes alongside of us and is our helpmate in that way. Todd, you can begin to transition back up to the platform as we get ready to close. I'm going to ask you in just a moment to stand, but I'm just pushing the pause button for a second. I said, is there one more thing? I knew there was one more thing. No, it's not your fault. That's my fault. Thank you to everyone who helped make today possible. If you helped in any way, shape, or form, I'm going to embarrass you and ask you to stand to your feet so that we can thank you. Would you do that, please? I'll call you by name if you don't stand up. Please stand up. Please stand up. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. You made today a great day. Do you appreciate them? Yes. It was great. It was great. Many hands make light work, and there have been people here throughout the week and early this morning, and I just want to say thank you. Terry, thank you for you and your team. You guys did a phenomenal job today. Would you stand with me as we get ready and close? Many of you know the old hymn, he lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today.
And now those of you that know it are singing the rest of it in your head right now. (laughs) But can I tell you, it's more than a good song. It's the reality of the situation. It's the reality of the day. He's alive. Christianity is the only religion that believes in a risen Savior. You can go to the tomb and find the dust. You can go to the tomb and find the ashes of all of their little G-O-D-S, their gods. But you go to the tomb of Jesus and it's empty. The only thing that's in there is dust because it's 2,000 years old. There's no ashes. There's not dust from human remains. It's empty. He's alive. He died so that you and I could be forgiven and he was raised to life so that you and I could have right standing with God. That's the sacrifice that Jesus made. That's the design that God had from the very beginning and it's still his heart today. God's purpose for Jesus hasn't changed. It hasn't grown weak. He hasn't rethought it and can I tell you that the blood of Jesus that was shed on Calvary's cross for the forgiveness of sin has not lost its power it still forgives today and it will tomorrow and it will for another thousand years if Jesus doesn't return it's always going to be good enough no other sacrifice will have to be made for the forgiveness of sin of mankind. In a moment, we're just going to begin to pray. And we've been praying that the Holy Spirit would just move in such a real way during this prayer time as we get ready to close our service. I'm going to pick on you adults for a moment. Your brains have already begun because we've stood up. Your brains have already transitioned to what's happening after church. Stay with me. Give me five minutes. Give me five minutes. Give me five minutes. Stay here. Because what's about to happen could change the course of eternity forever. It's that important. You say, well, I've already asked Jesus in my life. Well, he's not done yet. He still has more for you. If you're a believer today, if you've asked Christ into your heart, this isn't just something for somebody else. Yeah, we're going to ask people if they want to surrender their heart and life to Christ today, but he wants to move in your life today too. He, He still transforms lives. There's a transformation that takes place when we say, Jesus, come into my life, forgive me of my sin. There's a transformation. It's powerful. It's real. It is awesome. But he keeps transforming us. He loves you so much, he doesn't leave you the way you are. He doesn't leave us the way we are. He continues to move and forgive and change. He he just continues this beautiful, beautiful process. So don't feel like what's being said, you just kind of check out. No, the Holy Spirit wants to do something real in your life. But for those of you that feel like you have, maybe you once had that relationship and, and now you don't, can we just take a moment and pray? Can I just pray with you and let you know that Jesus sees you? I want you to know this morning he still loves you. He hasn't stopped loving you. He never will stop loving you. He will always love you. You and I can't change how he feels about us. You can turn your back on him and run forever, and you will never change how he feels about you. So you haven't strayed too far. You haven't done too much. You haven't gone too far. 
So if that's you, we just want to take a moment and pray. And I want you to pray this with me. And say, dear Jesus, thank you that your love doesn't change. Thank you for not turning your back on me. Thank you for not giving up on me. Forgive me of my sin. I repent and turn from it. And now I run back towards you. Walking away from that which has held me back and running towards you. Help me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And for those of you that might be here and you've never prayed a prayer like that, you've, you've never experienced a relationship with Jesus, I want to take a moment and say today, today is the opportunity that you have to ask Him to come into your life, to begin that relationship that He desires. Listen, He desires it. loves you so much. He sees what you're struggling with. He knows what your hurts and your burdens and your shame. He understands your brokenness. But it's beautiful because he says, I am. He's everything that you need him to be. He wants to be your hope. He wants to be the source of your joy. He wants to give you his peace that passes all understanding. So if you've never asked him into your life, I want to pray with you right now to begin that relationship with him. going to pray and if that's you would you just repeat this after me and listen it's not about the prayers it's about your heart excuse me it's not about the words it's it's about your it's about your heart it's it's believing who the word says that he is but if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth scripture says that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So if you're online, if you're in person, let's just pray right now. Say, dear Jesus, thank you for coming to this earth, living your sinless life, and dying a cruel, horrific death on the cross. You did it so that I could be forgiven. And then you rose again so I could be in right standing with you. Come into my heart. Come into my life. I want a relationship with you. Be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me for my past mistakes. And I repent and I turn away from them. And I run towards you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want to take a moment. If you were online and you said either one of those prayers with us, would you go to our website or would you drop us a message and let us know because we want to reach out we want to pray with you we want to walk alongside of you if you're in person this morning and you did that would you connect with me or my wife pastor crystal she came and did the announcements earlier would you connect with one of us so that we could just have a conversation and pray with you and encourage you thank you so much for being here today thank you for celebrating thank you for eating with us 
If you have a connection card, make sure that you fill it out. If you didn't get one, then pick one up at that information table. A couple of you have asked about giving. We have giving envelopes available at the information table, and you can grab one. There's a box in between the glass set of doors, and you can just drop that in there as you leave. And finally, kids, if you have your sheets filled out, you can take them back to Miss Kayla, and she's more than happy to get you your prize. God bless you. Thank you for being here today. Enjoy the rest of your Easter, your Resurrection Sunday, and whatever you're doing. God bless you. Have a great day, a great week, and we'll see you again soon. You are dismissed.